Welcome back to Feast Fight Back. Today's video was an appointment day and there's also a bit of an update about what's been going on. Good morning. Um, I do know good morning in a few languages um, and some people have kindly told me different ones as well. But right now I have not got them in my brain. So <laughs> um, for the moment, still good morning. Um, but um, today is the first day I've filmed for quite a few weeks. Um, there's been a lot going on. Um, yeah, a lot going on. And I will do an update as to some of the things that have been going on and why it's taken me so long to film again. And just, just what's, yeah, just what's been happening. Um, but for now, today is um, appointment day. Um, so, got my appointment this morning, getting my weigh-in done again, um, but anyway, sitting down for breakfast, um, I've got my teaspoon that says, you can try but I'm unbreakable, which is one of my favourite quotes from one of my favourite musicals, um, which I'm going to use for my porridge with my chocolate. Also, I need to ask a question because this is something that I've done for a long time and I think it's a work of genius, but my mum says it's a bit weird. So give me one. So I have Biscoff on my toast each morning um, and I've got crunchy and smooth. But what I do, okay, I find the crunchy Biscoff too crunchy, like it's just too much crunch sometimes. So I get the crunchy Biscoff and the smooth Biscoff I take some out of the smooth and then I put it in the crunchy one and then I like mix it around because then it's less intensely crunchy, a bit smoother, but still has the crunch in it. And my mum says it's that strange. So is that strange or is it a work of genius? Anyway, breakfast time. This was my little outfit of the day. Because it's been a few weeks since I last filmed, I feel like I've got a lot to catch up on. Um, I'm gonna start off with a bit of an update of what's been going on, or I'm gonna update on some of the things that have been going on. There's some things that I'm not gonna talk about because, because I don't know yet, and I don't like not knowing things. So I'm having to sit with some discomfort with that. Um, but, I, what's kind of, what's one thing that's been going on? Um, I guess this is a part of recovery that I've never really spoken about before. And I don't know why, because it's been quite an important factor for me. Um, I had a blood test um, a couple of months ago, looking at my hormones. And um, they were very, very low, like, basically non-existent, <laughs> um, as in hormones for getting my period back and things like that. Um, and it, it wasn't, it, it shook me when I heard that they were as sort of non-existent as they were. Um, because one day I want to have kids 
and I actually spoke to someone um, around the same time I got that blood test result um, and they were saying that something that really helped them was the fact that they knew that they wanted to be a mum and I think a mixture of speaking to them and then um, getting that result um, it really yeah it shook me um, and I I I want to be a mum one day um, and and I it, I used that as a motivation to keep on going and you know make things go a bit faster um, and the good news is well I've not actually had another blood test to look at um, my levels yet but I know that I have improved my health I know that because I've improved my health hopefully um, those hormone levels are coming back, albeit slowly. Um, and what this means for recovery um, is you start feeling a lot again. <laughs> I really want to have a body that one day I can have a family. Um, but going through the process of body um, restarting trusting you again and saying okay I've got a bit more energy now I, I feel like I can start using some energy to um, start producing these hormones again um, and I've, I've not got my period back yet but I think after I spoke to my nurse about it I'm well on the way to getting there and what I'm trying to say is what this means is that that is causing me to feel like I'm on a bit of a roller coaster um, I think there's the hormones aspect of it. Um, there's also the aspect of the eating disorder numbs things. Um, it, it, for me, it makes things feel, I don't know if, if I don't have the energy, I don't have the energy to think about things when I am restricting. And I think the last year, I don't know, I sort of thought a lot of the things that I was struggling with, they just, they didn't seem to be there. And I thought, oh, maybe I'm over it. <laughs> I wasn't over it. Um, I think it's just, those things are still there. Those things that I find difficult, the things that the eating disorder might have covered up, um, sort of, me feeling, me not liking myself, um, me kind of, I th for me, my eating disorder's always been about not really wanting, not really wanting to be seen, not wanting to cause a problem, not wanting to be a hindrance, um, and for me that is just, I don't, I don't like myself. I don't feel like I, I should. I don't want to be a problem in anyone else's eyes. I don't want to be a thing. Um, and I think all of those sort of beliefs are still there. And maybe I've been finding those quite difficult to manage recently. I think a mixture of all of this sort of feeling again because I've got the energy to hormones kicking back in. Um, it created a big mess <laughs> a big mess in my head that I didn't really know what to do with and I felt very overwhelmed tired um so I guess that's kind of most of what's been going on and I think speaking about it now it kind of sounds like oh, it's not a lot <laughs> but it feels like a lot um I've been doing things differently. I have spoken to people that can help me through that or maybe not even have the answer, but I'm allowing people to sit with me whilst I don't know what the answer is. And I find that difficult. I usually will only go to someone with a problem once I've come up with a solution because it goes back to that, like not wanting to be a hindrance. Like, I don't want to come to someone with a problem and then, like, just put the problem on them and not 
have a solution so usually I'm like okay so I struggled four weeks ago but I've resolved it and this is what we're going to do that's not what I've done and maybe it's not felt clear what to do and it hasn't um it's not been clear how to go forwards but I have spoken to people I've let people in I've let people help me think about a new route forwards um, and yeah, it's just taken time and energy. And at the same time, still managing snacks and meals and eating and resting and all of the things that come with recovery, which they are more routine now, but they're still not easy. Um, I think about things less sort of oh, what do I want I'll go with what I want rather than rather than overthinking it um but I'm not recovered I still have a way to go um and it's a process and I hated it when people used to say this to me at the start of this recovery because it feels so difficult when people say just trust the process and you're going you have to just you have to just trust that it gets better and it does it does get better and I don't want to say that it doesn't because it does like last week I sat and ate things that I would have even a few months ago would have caused me so much anxiety and they didn't and I don't know if maybe it doesn't get easier or more, dif more difficult maybe it the types of challenges change um food is still not easy I still have fear foods I still have things that cause me more discomfort than other things um, but on the whole, it's not as intense as it was this time last year, for sure. But I've got this whole added thing at the moment of everything that I didn't have the energy to think about last year is there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's been going on. Um, I've got my appointment, we're about to leave, so I'm going to go and have that, and I'll do a bit more of a update from what's been going on with that later. This was me making my lunch, I made my hummus and falafel wrap. Do you want to know what I'm having for my morning snack today? <laughs> okay. I bought this in January of this year, so January 2022. Um, I absolutely love flakes. I absolutely love caramel. And it has been sat in my snack drawer. It's, no it's November. It's been sat in my snack drawer for a while. And um, yeah, I was like, I'm going to have it this week. I am going to have it. So... I'm going to have my caramel, carrot milk flake, finally. Then we were off for my appointment. I had my apple first, of course, and then I had my caramel milk flake. This was amazing, although I did make a rookie error of trying to eat a flake in the car. I mean, it was very, very, very messy, um, but it was delicious. 10 out of 10, amazing. Um, then I had my appointment. Then we went to the cafe to have lunch. I had a lovely cup of tea, which I've not had for a while, so that was nice. Had my hummus and falafel wrap. Then obviously had my mini cheddars, then my yogurt, and then finished it off with my favorite mix crunchy caramel bar.
So, I have to like crouch down for this. Um, my dinner tonight, I'm gonna have something slightly different. And I don't know really why I'm asking this question on here. Did my nails? Um, because I'm not gonna put it out before I have dinner, but I can't decide what to have for dessert. I have got two different desserts to have. I've got this, which is like, it is a mocha cream mousse dessert thing. And it comes in its own little glass jar. And I've wanted to try this for absolutely ages. And I eventually picked it up the other day and thought, okay, I'm gonna have it. So it's between that or a muller rice. Can't go wrong with a muller rice, right? And so here's the thing. For my dinner tonight, I'm gonna have um, like rice and chicken. Um, so that would make this more of a challenge because um, that's like double rice, okay? But then this is more of a challenge because I've never had it before. And I don't really know, like, I don't know what it's gonna be like. And I kind of really wanna try it. So they're both quite a big challenge. And I don't know which one to have. I, I don't know. I, I think, I think <laughs> I'm going to get to dinner time and then literally like ip dip do it. But that's what I'm currently trying to decide. <laughs> we decided that was a good point to get some fresh air and go on a dog walk, which was just, it's beautiful. I love this time of year. Well, I love every time of year. I love all the seasons, but it was really like cold but autumny day it was lovely my afternoon snack okay it was a huge deal and i was gonna do a proper intro to it but we ran out of time and i was like i really need my snack so i thought okay i'll just do a voiceover this bar was the bar way back in like april when i was like no i'm gonna do this i am gonna do this this was the first bar that i had that was like the start of like proper increases and I have not had it again since because I don't know it just held a lot of like emotion for me and then I was like no I'm gonna have it and it was delicious um I'm not too sure if I liked it as much as the first time but it was delicious I'd say seven out of ten I'm going to do a quick update um from the appointment it was very helpful very validating um and I think we've just We've just recognised I'm just at a difficult stage in recovery. Every stage is difficult in recovery. Um, it, it is. I, I think I'm currently facing a new, a different set of challenges to what I have been facing before. Um, and we sort of spoke about it. And, you know, this time last year, it's a very loud helicopter. This time last year, um, it was, you know, it was, it was life and death and everything was, you know, very drastic and, and, and it was awful. Um, and even when I managed to stabilise a little bit and I managed to come home, we were sort of talking about, you know, how the goals, you know, the goal first off was I was, I didn't want to go into hospital and then ended up in hospital and then I didn't want to go to an inpatient unit and I, I made, managed to make the enough right steps to be able to come home instead of going into inpatient. And then it was a case of, I don't want to be readmitted to hospital. And I didn't want to be admitted into inpatient care. And my nurse sort of said, I trod this line of oblivion constantly for so long where I don't know, it, it always felt like very clear cut. I knew what I didn't want and I knew what I wanted. And whilst that didn't make it easy at all, my gosh, it wasn't easy. I had such a humongous drive that I did not want to go into hospital. I didn't want to be readmitted and I wanted to get better. And then even, even recently, like in the past sort of few months where I wanted holiday to go really well and I and I wanted and I managed to get out of the chair and and then I wanted to go back to uni and all these things and and I was dealing with things and I was gaining energy to be able to deal with these things. Um 
and so many so many things that have happened recently have been good and I don't know if I'm making much sense at the moment but they have they have been so good and I've had moments where I've been like this just it feels like me and I feel like I'm getting there and I feel like I'm better and I am I am so much better than I was and oh, this is where I cried in my appointment and I don't want to cry in this video I still have an eating disorder I want to not think about all the things that still happen in my head. I want to have restarted uni and everything to just slot into place. Just, you know, manage what I was managing on my food at home at uni. Um, I got up to my hour long dog walk and that was really positive. I feel like everything should have just slotted into place. And in so many ways it has, in so many ways, I am, my life at the moment is completely different to how it was last year, even a few months ago. I don't stress about the things that I used to. I don't stress about the flavour of yoghurt because it means I can have a different thing late. Like all those small negotiations don't happen anymore. I'm so much more relaxed around food so much of the time. But I still have an eating disorder. I'm still in recovery. And my nurse pointed out today that it's just going to take time. It's a process and I need to trust the process. I need to trust that it's going to get better. I think what we spoke about today is I have this, I have this image of myself better. I have this image of me laughing and and just I don't know doing whatever I want to do and not being constrained by the thing in my head by an illness and I know where I don't want to be I don't want to go backwards that terrifies me I know where I want to be. Getting there is just hard. I also know it's not going to happen overnight. And an eating disorder isn't just something that you can just squish. Um, for me, I will have to grow my life around it. And I have, I have, in fact, I'm even gonna put in now some of what I've been up to the last few weeks. Despite being in a difficult place, this is what I've been up to. I had many a cuddles with the dogs. Had a super exciting day, spoke at an amazing talk thing. Um, about autism and eating disorders, which I think we know is something that is very important to me. Um, so yeah, just got a lot of uni work to catch up on now, but we'll be okay. <laughs> I had Ali and Hannah around for bonfire night and we did sparklers, which was so much fun. I submitted my first assignment. Back to video. And so I know I know things are getting better. I think that there is a difficulty in being in a physically better body when I have moments where I don't feel as good as I might look. I think it can be difficult 
saying and knowing that I still have an eating disorder. Despite the fact that I'm eating enough to support my recovery, regain my weight, despite the fact that I'm doing so many normal things, despite the fact that, despite the fact that things are better because they are better, but I'm still, I'm still not better. This is a journey and it's a process and the last few weeks have shown me that I need to take it. I need to balance things because for me, when things start going out of balance, that's when things slip. And I don't want them to slip. So I know that in many ways this has been a bit vague. And I think that's because in my brain things feel a bit foggy. And nothing has gone horribly wrong. Um, I've had to have some difficult conversations the last few weeks. And we're currently trying to find new ways forwards. What I do want to say is... I, I want to say thank you for every single comment that I get on these videos because I know I have been rubbish at replying to them recently because things things have felt a bit messy but they mean so much to me support means so much to me and actually that's what I said in my appointment this earlier today is actually right now I feel really scared. I feel scared about, I don't know what forwards looks like. I know where I want to be, but I don't know. I don't know how to get there. I don't know. I don't know what it will feel like when I'm there. I know it will be better and I'm still going to get there, but it is scary. And I know that I, I can't do it by myself. And I wanted to say thank you for support. Thank you for bearing with me whilst I've been a bit all over the place. We will get there. After filming that little bit, I did some more uni work. I often think if people wonder like what I do on the days like I'm not filming and if it's much different. I say no, it's not much different. Like the main difference is I am permanently in my dressing gown. Um, and then on the days that I film, I actually make a special effort to not always be in my dressing gown. Um, but yeah, I've currently been doing some uni work and firmly in my dressing gown. It's not even like a warmth thing. It's just a comfort thing. I love my dressing gown. Um, but just finishing doing some uni work and then going downstairs and having a different dinner, dinner, different dinner for dinner tonight. Does that make sense? I'm not too sure, but I've been changing up a little bit on a couple of days a week, still having my pasta and stuff quite a lot because that's what works for me and that's okay. I have been changing up a little bit. Um, so tonight I've got rice and chicken and I still don't know what I'm gonna have for my dessert. Um, I'm just gonna see when I finish my main, which one I want. I know it's between those two things. Um, so I really don't mind which one it is. Um, usually when I really don't know, mum puts them behind her back and then I choose mum and then whatever one it is I have. But yeah, a bit of a different dinner tonight, so we'll see how it goes. For dinner, I was branching out a little bit. I had this, which was um, jerk chicken with rice, and then it had some beans and stuff in it, and then obviously just whacked some broccoli on the side. It was okay. I wouldn't have it again, but I am pleased that I tried it. <laughs> That's the review for this one. I missed my pasta. I went back to my pasta the next night. Um, I still had no idea what to have for dessert, so mum chose one for me and I went for the mocha choco latte glass cup thing, um, which I'm actually kind of glad I did because I was like, oh, well, I like reviewing things when I do a YouTube and I was obviously filming this day, um, so I can do a little review for it. It was okay. 
Um, it was basically like a chocolate mousse of like, I think it was white chocolate, like cream on the top. Um, and then like a coffee cream layer and then like chocolate sauce on the bottom. Yeah, it, it was okay, but I wouldn't get another one, but I am glad I tried it. It took me ages to try it and I eventually did. Um, so if you like mocha stuff, then maybe I just, yeah, I think there's other ones that are nicer. Sorry, this is a rubbish review. I'd give it a six out of 10. Okay. <laughs> This was my crossword that I did whilst having dinner. I had a shower, then I had my night snack, obviously. Um, I absolutely love my night snack, definitely one of my favourite snacks. And I wanted to finish this video on this quote. 